Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today what we're going to talk about is how to integrate Get into Godot. So we're going to go through the process of downloading the Get Godot add-on. We are going to download Get as well. We're going to install Get, and we are going to go ahead and set up our add-on with a Godot project. And then we are going to go ahead and create a Git repo and commit some code to that Git repo locally. And then we're gonna talk about some of the differences with this integration versus something like SourceTree or GitHub Desktop or Git Bash and some of the benefits and limitations of both of them. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go out to the Godot Engine Git plugin. And we're gonna go ahead and pull that down. So we're gonna click right here, Godot Git plugin. And in my case, I'm gonna grab version 1.2.2. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And I've already downloaded it, so we're good there. The next big thing that we're gonna have to pull down is Git. So we'll go ahead and pull that down. So download that for Windows, and you will see that I'll go ahead and pull that down real quick. And then we're gonna to have to go ahead and download it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up and I'm gonna go ahead and double click on get and we will go ahead and install it. So we're gonna click next and we can go ahead and keep all of this. Go ahead and hit next. And I'm gonna go ahead and allow get to decide. I am going to bundle with SSH. I'm going to do the get credentials manager and I am good with those. And we will go ahead and install it. Oh, in my case, I have some stuff open. So let me go ahead and close my bash and I will close my source tree as well. And we'll go ahead and hit install. And it's gonna go ahead and remove the previous version, which in my case is 2.28. I've already have get, so it's always good to keep your stuff up to date. So let's let that run through and I will be right back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck review release notes and we will go ahead and hit finish. And you can see I already have a bunch of the Git plugins. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and get rid of those. I'm going to right click this and extract and let's extract this. We're going to need a Godot project. I already have one for my previous tutorial, my app Lovin tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So app Lovin right here. I'm going to open that up and I'll resize this for you. Okay, now that we're inside of Godot, what we need to do is we need to put our add on into Godot. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our add-ons and open in file manager and that's going to go ahead and open up our file manager here and you can see that i already have my native lib now obviously we don't need that but that's just part of the previous tutorial so what we can do is we can open up our git integration make sure that you have it extracted in my case i already have it extracted it's right here so i'm going to go double click on that and we need to make sure that we have our godot git plugin we don't need this section we need to have this specific file because if you put a file underneath here or if you don't have it inside of a file, you're going to run into a problem. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste it. And then we're going to go into Godot and we are going to go ahead and click on project version control, setup version control. And then you'll see that it says version control system is Git API and we will go ahead and click initialize. And what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and create our get repo locally on our machine. One of the things that this plugin can't do is it cannot create remote get repos. So if you're trying to create like a GitHub repo through this, you're not gonna be able to use this plugin to do it. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now this is gonna take a long time, so I'm gonna let it run through and then I will be right back. Okay, so now that it's done, we're gonna go ahead and click close and you will see that not much has changed, but we have gained two additional tabs inside of Godot. We have gained a version control down here, which I will show you guys in a moment. And then we gained a commit over here on the right. Now the commit tab is really cool because it shows you all of your changes that has happened since you've last committed. So in my case, since this is an initial commit, you can see that there is lots and lots and lots of changes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click stage all, and that's gonna stage all my files. And then I'm gonna go ahead and type initial commit, and we'll go ahead and commit those changes. And this will probably take a minute as well. So I'll be right back. 
All right, you will see that this is now completed and you'll see that it says committed 10,398 files. So that's one of the reasons why it took so long. Now, if I come up to one of our buttons and I move it, let's say over a little bit and I control S and save, you'll see that it says modified up here. And what that means is that means I modified and moved my button. So if I go ahead and click on that, you'll see that I can actually get a status down here in my little version control section where it can tell me exactly what's changed. I moved my button from 98 pixels to 158 pixels and I moved it as well from 704 to 764. So you can see I moved it to the right according to this. Also, I can get code changes as well. So if I go into, let's say, my addmanager.gd and I add in a print, let's say, we add an open pop-up here. If I click on my GD script, you can see that it says, hey, he added this information here. And if I go ahead and delete something, so if I go ahead and I get rid of this age restriction and I save, when I click on my ad manager, you'll see that it says, hey, you added print and you removed the uh, set age restriction. Now, if I control Z and I control S and keep that because I'd like to keep that and you can see. Now I can go over here and type added print statement to my ad manager. And then I can go, I want to stage this one because I don't want to necessarily keep this change. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to stage that specific one. Well, in my case, I staged both because I have both of them selected. That's my fault. Oh, well. And then I just go ahead and I can click commit. Oh, I need to actually stage. So stage that commit and you'll see that it committed my file. Now, one of the things that I need to teach you guys is if Let's me delete that and save. If I stage, so I have these two staged files you can see right here. If I click my refresh button, it will reset my stage. So then I can just stage the one. And you can see I just have the one staged. So if you click this refresh button, it actually removes your stuff from the staging. So that's good to know. So this is a really cool system and there's so much you can do with it. Now there are a lot of limitations here. You can't do branching like you can inside of something like source tree or GitHub desktop or get bash. You can't revert anything. If you commit it, you need to actually go into get bash or something like that. Again, you are unable to push your code to a remote repo. So if you have like GitHub or something like that, you can't just push directly from this plugin and you can't stash and apply changes. So those are just some things to keep in mind. You will need an external tool to help you out with that. For instance, an application called SourceTree here, which is what I use at work actually. So we'll go ahead and open this up. And actually, I think I already have it open at Blovin. Yeah, this is the one. So you can see if I click here, it shows the same thing as well, but I can also push, pull, fetch, branch, merge, and do all the things that I want to do. So it's a little bit more powerful and it has a lot more features and things like that. Um, or of course you could use, you know, GitHub desktop if you prefer. I can show you guys that. So you can see here's GitHub desktop. And if I were to open up that repo, you can see, you can see what it looks like. And it's basically very similar to source tree. So that's kind of one of the struggles that I have with the Godot plugin is it's just not as good as a external source control system, but for small changes and things like that, it's a really cool little system that you can use to, to back up your project in increments. Now, when it comes down to actually doing and using get, generally speaking, I don't use this. I usually like to use something like GitHub desktop or if I need a more robust system, I'll use something like source tree to do all of my get handling. That's not to say that this isn't a good system or anything like that. It's just to say that it's a good system for what we need it to do. But 
that is all I have for you guys today. So if you like this video, hit that like button. Hey, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I'm here to make content for you guys. What do you guys think about Get Integration? Is it actually worth using or would you rather just use your Get interface of choice, like the Get Bash or like GitHub Desktop or Source Tree? Which one would you guys rather use? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, if you guys have any questions about this or any comments, hit me up on our Discord. The link is in the description below. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching. And I will see you all next time. Thanks.